some in the house. Hey, you guys, Dr. Sean's in the house. Tonight is lecture night. Welcome. I'm so happy you're here. I'm Dr. Sean. You might be joining on Project Forgive, which is our flagship mother home. And we also got the Dr. Sean page. We have Positive Compassion and the Joy page. So however you got here, we're thrilled that you're here. I'm Dr. Sean. I happen to be the one who shares, <laughs> picks the quotes and shares the content for Project Forgive. And I'm a scholar who happens to love personal development. My scholarship is in communication and, uh, and it seems like everything falls right to forgiveness every single time. We're non-religious, we're non-partisan, I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat or you praise God or Allah or Buddha. Of course I have my own beliefs and everyone and anyone is welcome here. So with that said, tonight's topic is triggers and boundaries and anger. Oh my, triggers and boundaries and anger. Oh my, that's like a play off the Wizard of Oz with the lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. And um, this is a topic that I really want to unpack tonight in a very different way. It's not, the lecture tonight is not structured, here's how you set a boundary, here's how you train people. I've done a kabillion lectures on that. I want to go underneath, like, what has you set a boundary? That's what we're going to play. I can see you guys are showing up. Hello, hello, I see you. Let's see who's here. Oh, Deborah's from Albuquerque, Rock and Roll, Jersey Shore, Lori. I'm so glad you're here. Hi, Janet, I see you. Hi, Anne. Oh, Deanna, you're so sweet. What a sweet thing to say. Hi, Nadine. I'm happy to see you, too. Hey, Joy. Joy is my favorite word. I love your name. I'll never forget your name, Joy. That is one of my favorite words. All right, so tonight is about triggers and boundaries and anger. Oh, my. And at the at two things I just want to give commercials for, Joy is a habit or Facebook group. If you're inspired, I'll put up a link. When the lecture's over, I'll put up some questions that I have for you to really think about and ponder for this that are going to coincide with the lecture. And I'll put up the link to our Joy's Habit Facebook group. I love that Facebook group. And at the end of this lecture, I always give something away. So tonight I'm going to be giving away our Forgiveness Essential Oil. I don't know if you're an essential oil person. This stuff works. It's pure. It's therapeutic. It, we had it made for us. It's exquisite. So someone's going to win that tonight, okay? <laughs> Joe, you're so funny. Go check it. Okay, so the first question I have for you around this conversation of boundaries, are your boundaries actually rules or are they boundaries? Let me give you a definition of the bound, of boundaries that we're going to use for tonight's lecture. And it's really setting boundaries as a form of self-care. It's about self-care. It helps you click, create clear guidelines of how you want to be treated. Okay? That's pretty fair and reasonable. Now, the boundaries that you set, because all my grandkids use the word boundaries. Grandma, you're stepping on my boundary. Blah, 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 boundary, 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 boundary. <laughs> and uh, it can get unruly a little bit. So one of my rules when the kids were teenagers was you have to park in the street. Because I'd come home with the car full of groceries. There'd be nowhere to park in the driveway. And I'd have to go park in the street and come in the house, tell the kids, hey, move your cars, you know, blah, blah, I got groceries. And um, so that was a rule. Some might argue that's a boundary. As an older woman now, it could be both. That's why this unpacking process is so important, because it matters who you're being when you're setting boundaries. So I'm the mom of teenagers, hey, your car's in that driveway, I told you not to, I told you had to park in the street. Versus now, in my being, hey, sweetie, my daughter, Autumn, who's 37, 36, hey, sweetie, can I remind you to park in the street? Because sometimes when I get home, I have a lot of groceries to bring in, and it's getting heavy. I'm getting older, and that really is a lot of self-care for me when I can park in the, you know, go right into the garage. Probably could have done that when the kids were teenagers, but that's not how I talked to my kids as a teenager. I wasn't that self-aware. It was more about the steadfast rule. It's a small, minute discrepancy, and it's a big one. Who are you being when you're setting boundaries? So that's something to think about. I want to go, I want to use some examples, things that I went through this week that I am really looking at and really questioning. Is this a boundary? Is this a rule? 
um, you know, who am I being around this? These are really important questions. And the key question is, what is causing you to set a boundary? Why are you setting a boundary at all? I'm going to use this first one and the first one, and then I'll come see what you guys are saying about it. All right, so on Monday this week, my daughter calls me and says, oh my gosh, mom, I need your help. I work at home. I have my own business, you know, and I have a nine to five kind of job. Mom, I need your help. The, the, her babysitter had to go and she had a toothache. She had to go to emergency dental. Can you take care of Peyton, my grandchild? She's nine months old. And I'm like, sure. I didn't want to because then I had to think about, okay, what's my boundary? I still got to make a living. Are you with me? Okay. She needs help. I'm going to embrace all of it. I'm going to embrace it all. I'm going to, I'll end up having a wonderful day with Peyton because she's just a joy. My husband will help me. I had one consult like at 11 o'clock. We tag teamed with each other because he works from home too. And um, at the end of the day though, I felt really, really bad. Triggers and boundaries and anger. Oh my, I was actually feeling angry. And it wasn't until Tuesday that I actually figured out why I was so angry that I didn't feel like I had permission to say no. Now, I'm a 58-year-old woman. <laughs> I have permission to say no. I didn't allow myself to say no. Say, like, okay, so if I really wanted to say no, what was causing me to want to say no? What was the boundary? Because um, I got to work. Because I got to do this. I got to do that. What? Why was I so angry? Why was I so triggered? And what is the boundary? And I got to the heart of it. It's been an amazing week. The heart of it was that I actually felt guilty that I wasn't working. I don't know about you, but I come from a family you never call in sick. You always show up for work. You're over-responsible. It didn't matter that I didn't work on Monday. What is my def integrity? I always say is my highest value. Always say that. So who was I out of integrity with? My steadfast rule that I must work and can never take a day off. And I didn't really take a full day off because I met with client, a client. And that had me really think, wow. Actually, when I look at this week, that was one of the highlights, highlight day of my week was being with her, right? So what was one of my highlights to be with her? So it, it had me thinking as things unfolded this week around this topic of triggers and boundaries and anger. Oh my, let me see what you guys are saying. Yep, I see, you'll get the read. Yep, can relate, Roberta, that's great. Hey, Danielle, I'm Michigan too. Let's see if anybody's saying anything that I need to say. I see. Okay, nothing, no comments that I need to address in the moment. Hi, team. Um, if you're just joining us, we're doing a topic on triggers and boundaries and anger. Oh my. And I would highlight, go back to the beginning because this is a, a lot, takes a lot of critical thinking, the kind of path that we're on tonight. So I'm taking you to the second example, okay? So here it is, Wednesday night. Triggers and boundaries and anger, oh my. And this is all about me self-reflecting, being mindful, listening to myself. I love talking like this or teaching like this because parables, for me, always work. I love parables. Cause when someone shares a story, I'm like, hmm, how could that apply to me and Susie or me and my husband? Or, you know, oh, I see that it applies in this way. So that's why I like to use parables. So it's Wednesday night. Both my daughters are coming over. I made dinner. We're going to cook that night to take them to my in-laws the next day. Now, I went above and beyond. I cooked five slabs of ribs. I make some mean ribs. I really do. I make amazing ribs. Five slabs of ribs. That was an all-day thing. Get, got all the ingredients. We're making a ham. We're making my sautéed mushrooms. We're making macaroni and cheese. All these things that I committed to because my daughter, Rachel, talked me into it. She says, oh, Ma, I'll help you. Like, no problem. My brother-in-law was coming over, so it's like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. My brother-in-law's over. 30 minutes before everybody's supposed to get there, my daughter Rachel texts me and says, I'm not coming. Okay. I'm like, crap. I went swore, but I'm not going to swear, basically. First of all, all my emotions came out inside me. Shared a little bit externally, but really managed it because... Managing your upsets is actually an internal boundary. 
it wouldn't benefit anyone for me to rant and rave. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. She had a beautiful reason, which I'll get to. But separate of her beautiful reason, I was still upset. And I'm like, okay, question, can I simultaneously understand my daughter's reason for canceling and also embrace my anger, trigger, no, I can't believe anybody, nobody ever does what they say they're going to do. That's one of my triggers. Do I believe people? And um, I worked so hard. The house was spotless. We slaved on those ribs. Now I still had a ham and mushroom and all this stuff to make, okay? So I'm, I'm ticked. I'm angry. I'm hurt. I'm feeling abandoned. While simultaneously, at the same moment, understanding why Rachel canceled, okay? So I'm like feeling pretty proud of myself that I'm able to embrace all these simultaneous feelings at once and just being with it because there wasn't really anything to do, right? So, okay, night, you know, we get through the night. My other set of kids come over with grandkids. We had fun. They stayed for an hour and then they went to their dance. There's all these step families and all these arrangements, okay? So here it is Thursday morning. Thursday morning, and my husband says to me, it's like 7.30, I, I didn't make the ham yet, I still gotta make the ham, and it's a pre-cooked ham, so I just gotta slather on the, the frosting or whatever you call it, and uh, the mushrooms are done. And he says, we're going to Rachel's house. Rachel lives 30 minutes from me. And I go, no, we're not. He says, yes, we're gonna go to Rachel's house. She's hurting, we're just gonna show up Surprise her with some of this stuff. I had a couple of presents for the grandkids because I know my little Abe's was probably really sad that I wasn't, she didn't see me the night before because I showed her this thing we we're going to do together as snowman. So I'm like, oh, well, let's call her. He says, nope, we're not calling her. So one of my boundaries, <laughs> you never, ever, ever go to anyone's house without calling, ever. For those just joining us, I'm sharing a parable and a story around triggers and boundaries and anger. Oh my. And he says, you know what, honey? She is not Autumn. Autumn is a daughter who has some, is a planner like me. Rachel, she happens to be my stepdaughter. I don't say that very often because I see her as my daughter. And she comes from an entirely different hardwiring family system. And she always says to me, come on over whenever you want, Ma. You never have to call, blah, blah, But I always call because that's my rule. And when I think about rules and boundaries, I don't know if you've ever heard this story, this is a sidebar real quick, where the meatloaf is made in a meatloaf dish and it's cut off a certain way and it's been passed down from generation to generation to generation and then the, the youngest daughter asks, well, why do we do it that way? And the great, great, great grandmother says, well, that was the size of my pan. So the, the rule, was set by the size of the pan, not for any other reason. So I'm thinking, okay, can I show up at Rachel's? Can I lean into my husband's intuition and just show up, okay? I was so uncomfortable because I like to follow the rules and I'm really questioning rules and boundaries and what this means. So we go to Rachel's house. This is like eight o'clock in the morning. We show up at the door. I thought her husband was going to have a heart attack. Because the look on his face is like, oh my gosh, I'm so uncomfortable. And I'm just, as I'm being so uncomfortable, there's nothing for me to fix. My internal boundaries are manage your own feelings, Shawnee, you're okay. And so we go to see Rachel, because my husband said to me, you know, if she tells us to go home, we'll go home, right? So as soon as Rachel sees us, she's very angry, okay? And I'm like, oh. doing things I normally would never do. And she, first thing she says to me is she says, you're supposed to call. <laughs> I always call, right? And then I said defensively, looking back now, defensively and trying to be funny, because sometimes I'll try to be funny to manage my discomfort. And I says, well, you said we can come over anytime we want. And then I said, okay, now be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. Just sit with this discomfort. Well, what happened was, Within less than five minutes, Rachel was grounded. She laughed. She said, okay, I'm sorry. I'm glad you're here. She was in her own trigger, right? 
And I can honestly say that this Thanksgiving was the most connective, most loving, and most beautiful Thanksgiving I've ever had. Ever. And it wasn't about doing it right. It wasn't about doing it perfect. It was about will, being willing to challenge how I think to challenge my rules, to challenge my boundaries. And it opened my heart up so beautifully. And everyone else's heart was open so beautifully. And the, 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 the important piece about this, because you know, we talk about abandonment, we talk about all these things, gaslighting, blah, 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 the narcissism in our lives. Well, the questions I've been asking myself have been more internal about, can I stay with myself? Can I not abandon myself and say, yeah, you want to just scream right now. This is really awkward and horrible. Now, these are intimate family relationships with family that I care about, that I want to invest in. So you can take this however you like. You don't have to do this at work. This can be with the most investment focused people in your life because we have different boundaries, different rules, different triggers with different people in our life. The one thing I know that's constant though is that wherever you go, there you are. <laughs> You're going to bring you. And I attribute that the beauty of that Thanksgiving morning of me laying down my defenses, laying down my rules, really listening in a new way for what boundaries I really do want to set, and being open-hearted. And all of it just kind of went together. You know when it's kind of magical like that? Um, yeah, I so get you, Gloria. I'm 58. I get it. Always working on that. It just seems to be getting easier and um, more rewarding. And um, here's the sidebar. The sidebar is one of my complaints. And I say these complaints because I think sometimes you guys have similar complaints as me. One of my complaints is nobody gets me. I'm so misunderstood. Um, you know, and then I spend a lot of time trying to show people who I am or communicate so people can understand me. And I've had a breakthrough in that recently. And it's about, okay, I don't always understand everyone. Do they always have to understand me? And will we ever truly understand each other completely? I don't know. Had me think about something um, 10 years ago. Did a, a leadership event. It was on PBS. We were live on PBS. We probably had 300 people in the room. And there were three cameras. I was up on the stage. And right when we went live, right when we were broadcasting live, several things happened. My notes on my music stand that's standing in front of me flipped over and fell off the stage and just were like confetti all over the floor. I'm like, oh crap. The same moment, all the comms, we were at earpieces when you're doing live television, all the communications, all the comms went down. Okay, and I'm like, oh crap. Like the worst thing that could have happened right at the start of the show. One of the, and it was a, a, a show about leadership. And so one of the things that I've learned about being a leader or being a thought leader is being so authentic and real and just saying what's so, and just instead of trying to like get through it, it's like, oh, you guys aren't gonna believe this. It's, we're at a leadership conference and of course this falls down on the ground. And I says, I've done this before so I've learned to put page numbers on the pages. Okay, got a big chuckle. And I said, and also what you don't know is all the communications are down on the earpieces. We've got all these crews running around trying to get the comms going. And the, the real question is, who are you going to be when everything's falling apart? You know? Well, that's the way it goes sometimes. That's like an internal boundary. And here's that misunderstanding. My son, who works in movies, he's a second AD, he's in the union, he's a big wig now. He was on the shoot. He was actually in charge of the floor. 
and after this, the event was amazing. It went exquisite. Within five minutes, the communication came back on, and we were just fine and peachy and dandy. No big deal. My son was so mad at me. He said, Mom, you never share those background details when you're live on television. And I thought for a second, he's not going to understand this. He's young. This is a leadership conference. The different rules apply than if we're actually doing a, you know, a fundraiser or leading into shows or a newscast, which I've done all of those. This was a different scenario. And he could not hear that. So I let myself be misunderstood. Pardon me. This misunderstanding is a powerful thing because it's a conversation of maturity, letting people misunderstand you. Now, you wouldn't want to do that deliberately to have people misunderstand you, but you, I think you know what I'm talking about. Let me just look. Let me just look what you guys are saying. So, Shannon, I'm going to answer you directly. How can your adult kids have a relationship with their dad? The boundary is you let them have a relationship with their dad. That's not your purview. That's not your business. I know you want them to have a relationship with their dad, but they're adults and they get to choose and create and have their own relationships. I got it. I totally get it. And they're in charge of their own relationships. Let's see if there's anything else. Yeah, and Lori, it's okay. And so with the story that I gave about going to Rachel's, if Rachel hadn't said to me before, come over anytime, because she's always been an open door. Hey, come on, swing by. That was always her boundary. My boundary is I do want to know. And I'm okay with that. Because I will be uncomfortable and embarrassed if someone came to my house and my, my main toilet wasn't clean or if I wasn't completely dressed or even had my hair brushed. That would be important to me. And so for my own self-care, I wouldn't want any surprises. So it's so okay to have that. It's so okay to have that. Yep, I'm with you, Gloria. Let me see if you guys are saying anything else that we need to address. So I'm going to go back to misunderstood. Gleva, Gleva or Gleva's given advice too to Shannon. Um, I, you know what I appreciate? I appreciate anytime someone puts their information out there to get feedback on it because I think that's courageous all on its own. Yep, let's see if there's anything else. Okay, so this misunderstanding, just like I'm looking at integrity, just like I'm looking at boundaries, is it a rule or is it a boundary? And uh, this misunderstanding, because a lot of boundary violations come from misunderstanding. And so allowing that to lean in a little deeper about how I perceived to be understood or misunderstood. The misunderstandings with my husband, because that's my primary relationship, I've loosened a lot on that. Like when I'm sharing something and he's irritated or whatever, I'm like, oh, I'm thinking to myself, he's completely misunderstanding me. How important is this one to me? Mm, not that important. Let it go. On a dime. That is a really, really cool thing. So conversation is, why does the boundary employ us? Is it a boundary or is it a rule? Just because you feel angry if something feels violated doesn't mean it's a rule or a boundary. That's for you to decide. If it's a rule, it's a boundary for self-care. You know, because boundaries can be as simple as, hey, sweetie, we're going to the in-laws for Thanksgiving. What's the maximum amount of time we're going to stay? One hour, two hours. That can be negotiated. Okay, two hours sounds great. What's going to be the signal if we must, 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 one of us leave right away? Like those are conversations you can have prior to, right? Those are conversations you can have prior to. I hope these stories and parables have helped you look at boundaries a little bit differently. This isn't wasn't my typical lecture. That, you know, I don't have bullet points, do this, do that, don't do that. But, you know, mostly to think about what is causing you to have a boundary. Is it trigger-based? Is it trying to avoid? Sometimes we have to have boundary sex or we want to avoid some pain. 
because, you know, when I look at that rule about showing up at somebody's house, like showing up at Rachel's house, I was so uncomfortable. And that might be one of the things I've been avoiding by not just showing up at her house. Meantime, tomorrow's her birthday, and me and my husband are going there very early in the morning just to bring her a present. We're just going to show up. Okay. Yeah. Let me just see. I see. You're welcome, Gloria. What about a grown son, Joyce, saying that he's lost his dad, that has no respect for his mom? That's not enough for me to answer, Joy. Maybe you can message. I mean, me and Hailey from the office of Williams get. If you want to put a little bit more details, I might be able to answer for you. Um, yeah. Yep. I'm with you about setting the boundaries. And you know, sometimes if the, the lack of respect is in how someone's verbalizing, like it just let me just play for a minute and it doesn't mean it's true, okay? Let's say Joy's son is really hurting, he lost his dad, and he's exerting an external anger at her. It has nothing to do with her, it's not fair, and it's misplaced anger. I say things, because I experience this, <laughs> one of the things I say, and it matters who you're being, Wow, when you talk to me like that, it hurts my heart. I don't think it's fair. I think you have other stuff going on, and it really doesn't matter. It just hurts my heart when you talk to me like that. Looks like a charm, because I'm being so honest. It hurts. I don't like it. And I don't know if you got other stuff going on. It just, this just isn't matching up for what's going on in this moment. It really hurts my heart. That's a good way to do it. Yeah, got it. Okay, I'm about to give something away. Hang on. Let's see if there's anything else I gotta say. Oh, no, I think that's good. Our next lecture is December 26th, day after Christmas, 6:30, and the topic is gonna be 2023: dumping toxicity and finding joy. Gonna really dive into toxicity a little bit. Look at what you want, what you don't want so you can have more joy in 2023. How does that sound? That's going to be the topic the 26th. I'll put up a, a link for that to, so you can see it happening. Now, someone's about to win this. It really is good stuff. It's our, our forgiveness essential oil. And this is how you win. You must be on the Project Forgive page because this is the only page I'm on, I'm on where I can see your hearts. So I'm going to tell you when to go, and you're going to put hearts in the comments. Not the hearts that fly, the hearts that go in the comments. And the sixth heart in the comment is going to win this prize. You must be in the U.S. to win. We ship only to the U.S. And uh, so the sixth heart I see in the comments, someone is going to win our forgiveness essential oil. It's therapeutic grade. It's really great. All right, Gleva or Gleva, forgive me. Put the pronunciation in if you wouldn't mind, you know, at some point here. Gleva, Gleva's number one. I'm getting to number six. Gleva's number two. Nadine is number three. Nadine is number three. Deborah's number four. Barbara's number five. Next one is it. Nadine, it's you. Nadine, you know what to do. All you have to do is just message me here on Facebook and give me your address and your email. We do never spam you emails for tracking the package. And um, um, we'll ship that out to you tomorrow, okay? All right, you guys. Wishing you much joy, much success with the boundary setting, being gentle with yourself, extra, extra gentle. Self-care and self-reflection takes a lot of vulnerability and a lot of wellness. And I appreciate you sitting through this conversation because it's a tough conversation. Sometimes it's tough to be with yourself and be with yourself. I just want you to know that I know that you know that I know that you know. Okay. All right, you guys. Have a beautiful night. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.